Wow, how do you follow that? <laughs> just have them do an encore and I'll just sit down. <laughs> that was good, see? I really should sit down. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here to share this time with you and uh, I have a very special story to share with you, and you're all special to me, so I think that matches up. Um, and so this is a teaching uh, reading that I had from Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Has anybody ever heard of that book before? <laughs> a few people. And, and so I got exposed to it 47 years ago, and so I'm going to give you a recap of my last 40... No, I'm just <laughs> going to hold off on that one. Um, so imagine a senior in high school. Um, I know there's some great scholars out there, but how many seniors in high school do you know like to read? A few, a few, a few, yes, yes. Uh, I was not one of those, just to let you know. Uh, but somebody handed me the book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, and said, read it. And I went, oh yeah, sure, okay. And, uh, the, and, and she said, no, no, I, you have to promise me that you're going to read it. So I do keep my promises, so I read it. I read it completely, and it, it, it changed my life, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, and so I read the book, and then it so inspired me, I wanted to do something, and I didn't know what to do. And so I contracted with somebody to take the seagull image that's on the cover and embroider it on the back of a uh, uh, Levi jacket. So it was pretty cool. I was considered extremely odd after I started wearing that, <laughs> but, uh, but I enjoyed it. Uh, that was this do something, I wanted to do something. And so, uh, and then as time passed by, uh, a movie came out. A movie came out on Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And so before the movie came out, I heard about the soundtrack was by Neil Diamond. Well, I'm a big Neil Diamond fan, so now you know I'm old. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I really like Neil Diamond, so I'm listening to his music, and I got a hold of the soundtrack, and I'm really liking that. And so then I want to go see the movie. And so I went, you know, expecting to see Long Lines, you know, because this was the premiere of Jonathan Lives in Seagull, and to my surprise, there was nobody in line. And so I went, oh, okay, well, the crowd must already be in there. And so I bought my ticket and went in there, and uh, I had the pick of the seat, whatever seat I wanted. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people in there, and the movie turned out uh, to be uh, what the movie industry considers a flop. But I sat there and watched the whole thing and was just totally engulfed in it, and then tracked down the VHS, that's how long ago it came out, I tracked down the VHS and had the movie so I could watch it over and over again. And then I did tell people that I had, you know, watched that movie and they just shook their heads. That is the most boring movie. It's about talking birds. That's boring. And so, uh, I, didn't, I didn't take it that way. And so, what I want to do for you today is just kind of walk through a translation that I have of that book to life. Um, and so it starts out that we have all these seagulls and they're fighting for food and all, and then Jonathan's in that group and he really doesn't want to fight for food, he wants to fly. And so off he goes and he starts practicing flying and so he flies and then he fails. He flies and then he fails, but he keeps getting up flies and then he fails. And then toward the end of his practicing, he had a pretty bad failure. So it was bad enough that he said, I give up. I'm going to go eat, fight for food. I'm going to be with the rest of the people or the birds over there. And so he went and he did that for a couple of days. And he says, no, nope, this isn't me. I, I, I'm not going to do this. And so then he left. And then he um, kept practicing, and then he made some great headways, and so some phenomenal headways. So he, he came back to the flock to show them, look what I've learned, look what you can do. And uh, they thanked him by banishing, making him outcast, say, you're different, go away. You're different, go away. And he did. Uh, and so he continued on his practicing, 
Uh, and then he got to a point where he reached uh, a level of consciousness that he got to go to the next level of consciousness. But as he was departing um, Earth, or whatever you want to call the analogy there, uh, here's something that, that, he, that he said. His one sorrow was not solitude. It was that other goals refused to open their eyes and see. And so that was very interesting to me in that his statement was not, I'm going to get them or I'll show them or all that kind of stuff. It was, he wished he would, they would listen. He wished they could see the limitless nature of their own bodies. And so he's cast out. Off he goes. Uh, and then he meets up with some other people. Birds. It, Swap the birds, people thing. Uh, but uh, so he meets up with some, some others, and they fly much better than he does. But he's wanting to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. And so he makes that choice that he wants to learn how to fly. And they're, and they're teaching him. They're teaching him. And then there's some elder gulls that show up that are all knowing, and they, they talk to him. Uh, and, they, and they share some other thoughts with him um, that I want to share with you. Jonathan stopped seeing himself as trapped inside a limited body. It was to know that his true nature lived as perfect as an unwritten number everywhere at once across space and time. How does that sound? Have you heard that type of language before? Uh, in our teaching, we teach that. Um, no limits. And um, so I, I thought that was very interesting that he continued to progress, continued to progress, and he was with like-minded people. And so here he is with like-minded people. They like, or birds, uh, and, and he's learning to fly, and he's learning to get better and better and better. Um, but something just keeps bugging him. What keeps bugging him is that what if there was somebody back in the flock that was in the same position as he was? What if they could learn what he has learned? How much further would they be ahead? And he even looked at himself and said, wow, if, if, I, if somebody only had come back and showed me what they've shown me now, all that time before, how far in advance would I be now? Have you ever done that before? Is it, I sure wish my current day self could go back to my 18-year-old self and have a little chat. <laughs> have you ever had that? And so Jonathan keeps working there, and it's pretty pleasant. I mean, if everybody thinks like you do, you get to practice, there's no big deal, there's no stresses, who would want to leave that? Who would want to leave that? Um, and so the elder Gull's, Gull was talking to him and said, well, you, you know it's not about flying. You know it's not about practicing your flying, right? And he's like, what? What do you mean? And so he said, no. The secret, which isn't a secret, is that you're to share love with everyone. And sharing that love and demonstrating that love, that's what you're here for. That's what you need to do. And so, in his own way of demonstrating love was to give something of the truth that he had seen to a goal who asked only a chance to see truth for himself. So with these thoughts that he was having, he's like, okay, I'm going to go back to the flock. I'm going to go back to those people that threw me out on my wing. I was going to say ear, but we'll go with wing. Threw me out on my wing, and I'm going to go back to them. I'm going to go back to them and teach them because there's somebody there. And we're talking thousands of goals, thousands and thousands of goals. And he's thinking if there's just one that could benefit from what I've learned, then that's how I'm going to share my love. And so he went back. He went back to the flock. And sure enough, he gets back and there's a couple of goals. Guess what happened to him? Outcast out on their wing. And so they're practicing and learning how to fly, and, 
And they're very mad, very mad at the flock that they couldn't see and that they punished them for wanting to learn. And so Jonathan shows up there, and by showing up there, he starts teaching them. And as he's teaching them, they go, well, how fast can I fly? How much can I do? And as he was sharing that with them, he, he came up and said, your whole body is nothing more than your thought itself in a form you can see. Break the chains of your thought, and you break the chains of your body. And so he continued to work with them, and, um, and they really liked learning from him because they did make that leap forward. So Jonathan was kind of validated that, yeah, if somebody would have came and ch- taught me all this stuff, I would have been much further ahead. And so he, he was feeling great about it. And so then the students said, but, but you're a great, the great goal. You're, you know, you're an individual that we can never me- measure up to. So we're going to look at you, and we're going to have you teach us, and we're always going to look to you. And he said, wait, wait. That's not the way that it works. So they were actually calling him divine in his response. Look at all the students. Are they also special and gifted and divine? No more than you are, no more than I am. The only difference, the very only one, is that they have begun to understand what they really are and have begun to practice it. And so they continued, and they were having some hard times, and, and so actually one of the, um, the, the goals, they just like hated these students that were flying. They just couldn't, it's like, what are you guys doing? You know, you get out of here. You're outcasts. You're outcasts. And so one day, Jonathan says, let's go to the flock. And they're all, are you crazy? They're going to kill us. Are you crazy? And he goes, no, we got to go back. And so they went. And so they formed a circle, and everybody, the great uh, leaders, were saying, ignore them. They're outcasts. Ignore them. But what started happening each night was a circle was created around the circle of students. And it was only at night because they didn't want to be seen by everybody else that they were wanting to know, that they were wanting to learn. And so the circle got bigger and bigger, and it even got up to a thousand goals that were around them teaching. And it's like, we want, we want to learn. And so one of, Fletcher is one of the, the goals that Jonathan is, is training, and, and he says, don't you hate them? Don't you hate all those people that outcast us? And this is his reply. You don't love that hatred. You don't love hatred and evil, of course. You may have to, pra- you have to practice and see the real goal, the good in every one of them, and to help them see it in themselves. That's what I mean by love. And so here we have this teaching. So we went from there's something more to life. That's what Jonathan was experiencing. And then he went to another life that says, I want to raise my level of consciousness. I want to learn more. I want to learn. And then the third is to teach. It's time to go back to teach. And that's where the love is, is teaching others of the truth of themselves. And I look at this, and, and I got this teaching 47 years ago. Okay, nobody do the math. 47 years ago. And then in uh, my days in the Air Force, I was in the Air Force for six years, um, and then I got asked to be a teacher of computer science in the military back in Denver. Uh, and I said, sure. Being in Denver with the snow, that'll be fun. And, and so I started teaching, and I taught for two years in the Air Force, and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And then I got out of the service, and then when I came back to California, California said, well, we recognize that you were a teacher in the Air Force, so here's a lifetime teaching credential in computer science. And so I got that, and so I said, well, I must be needing to teach. 
And so I taught community college for uh, several years, over eight years, teaching that, and enjoyed it, loved it to death. But it wasn't what I was supposed to be teaching. So I had a great teaching career. I have a great career in, in computers and technology, and, and I, I sort of know what I'm doing. And so uh, they have me do things, uh, uh, and it's fun, and I enjoy doing it. But 12 years ago, I walked in to uh, Namaste, and I started hearing things that resonated with me. And so I realized, not then, it took me a little while, so I did my two years of classes, and then, and then I went over to Seal Beach, and I did my two years of practitioner. But I realized that what I wanted to teach is to help people to know the truth of who they are that they are divine beings, that they are perfect, whole, and complete, just as they are. And so then I set out on my journey to learn. And my journey to learn was to go to ministerial school. And I learned, and I learned, and I learned. And I'm still learning. And I have a lot to learn still. But it's exciting for me to have that opportunity to teach. And now, switching from teaching technology to spiritual aspects of life is so much more rewarding. I am so happy for that. I am so happy for the opportunity to talk with you. I'm so happy and in gratitude with the teachings that I've been experiencing. And just think, that seed was planted 47 years ago and had nothing to do with science of mind. But it was like-minded. It was the truth, and it came through. And it inspired me to do better. And so all of you can accept the challenge. The challenge is first, know your truth. The truth of who you are. You have no limitations. There are no limitations. Look at the various examples out in the world of the person that plays a um, concert pianist uh, that is five years old or the person that speaks endlessly and can convince you of anything, and it's just, just what they do. There are talents out there, and everyone, every one of those people that you see as extraordinary have the same makeup that you do. No more, no less. The difference is their passion, the passion they have to live, and the passion to find that truth that they believe in. That passion is what drives you and then once you discover that truth for yourself, then you need to practice it. I mean, can a person that plays the piano one time jump up and then play a, um, whatever you call that, a symphony, or one of those fancy words for, <laughs> how have to help me out, what are they called? When, concerto. concerto, there it is. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> help me out there, I appreciate it. Uh, so no, no, it takes a lot of practice. And so when you're talking about working with the truth of who you are, it's really getting deep inside you. It's really understanding that your God is inside you and inspiring you. And that spark is always within you and that you're an individualized expression of God. And as you learn that truth and you keep working with it, more things come to you. So it's like Jonathan went to that next level. He went to that next level and had like-minded people. All of you are here today, I believe, because we're like-minded people. We believe along the same lines. And then once you reach a point where you are confident in the truth that you know, then share it. How many people in this world need help knowing the truth of who they are? How many people think that they're not good enough? How many people are out there that are miserable in their lives because they don't understand the love that's there for them? So I challenge you to go on your journey and also don't take 47 years to do it. <laughs> but I challenge you to go on that journey, discover your truths, and as you do that, You'll see the truth in others, and as you share that, you'll smile. You'll be happy, 
Because we are all one. We're all in this together. And wouldn't it be nice if we were all like-minded and we were all working to the same purpose? And that purpose is to demonstrate a new level of love. Thank you very much. Love and harmony and creativity. Yeah. Have a great week, everyone.